Hello, my name is Ziggy Sawdust and welcome to Artworks. How did you get into woodography? Uh, woodography is essentially, uh, there's a, it's not really a real word, it's something I came up with myself to describe a certain style that I cultivated. Um, I began whenever I was in Southern Oregon, in, uh, around the general Medford area of Southern Oregon. And essentially I try to combine elements of uh, painting, photography, and all applied into wood, right? So a lot of times I try to go with uh, very high contrast lighting, very uh, very strong, very emotive. And the way I do it is I you know, combine sort of like aspects of wood relief as far as removing layers from the top so all the images essentially stand out. And whatever the subject is, whether it's a flower or if it's a person, if it's a portrait, I want to have it correlate with the frame. So essentially integrate the relationship between the frame and the subject. That way make it all kind of come together and you know, be complete. When you were a kid and younger, did you ever think, oh, I'm gonna be working with wood, making portraits, making artwork? Maybe, maybe my parents did, uh, but I sure didn't. Uh, me, my, as far as just being creative in general, I mean, I remember, I think my mom still has a picture of some doodle I do with markers and crayons and stuff like that so, in a frame somewhere, so maybe, maybe, maybe my parents saw it, but honestly, I didn't have any notion of any sort of creativity as far as uh, something that we call art, and I never had any skill in that way. It's something I always admired. I was always strongly drawn to artwork, but I was always convinced it was something I couldn't do. And the way I actually started making artwork was I did, uh, I was going through uh, something, I can't remember the exact circumstance, but something really stressful happened to me. And I was um, all you know, very absorbed and you know, depressed. And so what I did is I wanted to you know, just sort of have a release and just not think about it. I drew one line on a piece of paper and just kept on going from there. And I was uh, about 18 years old and I liked what I saw and so I did it again. I did it again. And, you know, I just kept on drawing, kept on creating and eventually moved out to California to pursue artwork. Right after I turned 19 and uh, moved out to Napa, California to really start pursuing in that band. Ever since. I, I didn't really come into wood carving until it would have been, uh, gosh, probably 2000, 2009 at some point. So it all started. Can you explain the process of uh, creating this piece? I, I certainly can, yes. Um, essentially, what I did was I drew out the, just the general shape of the flower and took all the measurements for the frame. Then uh, I took a router and uh, got this uh, the first layer of the border down uh, all the way all the way around and just left these as uh, just blank squares carved out all in here to uh, a certain depth about a I would say about a about a quarter of an inch down and just had that flat and just brought in the shape of the flower. Then I drew on the uh, all the chain link and sort of carved down from there and got all the same depth and just brought it in that way. And as I did that, then got that all finished and came over here and brought the flower in and drew each layer and carved inward. You know, but I had a reference picture I was going off of that I was looking at in as well. But um, after everything is carved and brought in, I actually burn everything down and take sandpaper to it to sort of bring out all those tones. I mean, you have a range of browns. I mean, this is with basswood, so you have a lot of the coloring is just going to be tans and browns and a little bit of a yellow tone to it since it's very light wood. But since it is very light, you get very high contrast, so you can see it from afar and tell what it is. And yeah, just the, the chain link, just uh, it carved it out as flat and then just went around each area, made it swoop and uh, interconnect. It took, uh, took me about a week or so to finish, but uh, yeah, that's the, that's the general gist of what I do. So, uh, what are you going to do with this piece? 
Uh, now that it's finished, I, kind of, I carved this for uh, on a commission. So this piece will actually be shown probably in, um, I'll probably have it show at the next Raw, the next Raw Pittsburgh show I do down in Cabo Lounge. Um, I think it might be October, November, somewhere around there. I'll probably have it on display there. And then um, I'm hoping also take it on the road to do a Raw show somewhere also uh, in another state. So. I don't know, we'll see. I mean, I can sort of, uh, sort of whatever opportunities come up and wherever I can show my work, I'm always glad to. But uh, the whole idea is just to mainly just try to take every piece and promote it and show it to people and get it out there. What inspires you to create? That's a tough question. <laughs> um, as far as choosing my, my specific medium of wood carving, the thing I like the most about it is I'm taking, pretty much making something that's tangible, that stands out, that you can touch, that is real, that pretty much create more of a, even more of a connection with wood carving because you're actually pulling in actual forms. You're not creating the illusion of form, you're actually making something you can touch and feel the fact that, you know, it is there and, you know, it's tangible, it's you know, three-dimensional. So something, uh, that's something that really drew me to wood carving specifically, and I guess sculpture in general, is it's something that is it's there and it's tactile, and you know, to me, it, that makes it accessible to me. I, I did painting and drawing for a while, and though I, I enjoyed it greatly, there just wasn't that same connection that sort of, uh, you know, just sort of something that I enjoy, but there just, as soon as I started doing wood carving, I just, you know, I just knew that that's, this is the medium I wanted to work with. You're out in California. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, yeah. I, well, it wasn't woodography yet. Um, I, the first time I actually started uh, carving was uh, just just whittling. But uh, the funny thing is, is that before I even started wood carving, uh, essentially I, I came upon it as a lie. It started out all as, a, as a lie, essentially. I moved to Napa, California. Was doing drawing and painting, and everybody asked me. You know, Say you're an artist, what an artist you'd be like, oh, well, I draw and I paint, but I especially book art. No idea why I said this whatsoever. I had never done anything remotely resembling book carving, but that's what I told people. And then it was, it's funny how just years later, I started uh, taking trips up to Portland, Portland, Oregon. And whenever I'd stay up there, I'd camp out on a spot going up towards Mount Tabor. Uh, it's very, very close, very close to Portland and camp out there and walk into the city during the day and there was an old dead tree by my usual campsite. And what I would do is I, one time I got a whittling tools in town and decided to carve a face into one of the knots. And so it just sort of became a routine that every time I went back there, I would carve another face in another one of the knots. And whenever I, uh, after the economy crashed and I was forced to move out of the Bay Area in early 2009, I, uh, when I got back, I actually started doing wood carving on a regular basis and fulfilled my life. So, uh, <laughs> it's funny how these things work out. I have no idea why I said it, but now it's genuinely what I do. I mean, uh, what I really want to work on, though, my work moving forward is all going to be based on uh, essentially a false sense of abstraction where you look at a piece, you think you're like, oh, well, this is just an abstract design. But meanwhile, it's something that is based on something that you can find in nature. And then there are so many things that are around us that aren't abstract, but that are still all around us. Like right now, there's bacteria on my hands, most likely. Not that I don't wash my hands, but you know, let's say there's bacteria. So if you put that bacteria under a microscope, you know, it's a whole new world. It's something that is very much a part. You know, it's all around us. It's everywhere. But since it's on a microscopic level, we don't see it. And so it's almost, you know, to us, it, it appears abstract and foreign. Meanwhile, it's something that is very much real. So I, there's a lot of work that I'm going to do that's going to be based around that general idea of false abstraction. So moving forward, that's really going to be the direction that a lot of, you know, my personal work that I, I, I want to do that isn't commission work that's going to be essentially focusing on. Honestly, I'm just trying to get it out there and have it you know, show it to as many people as possible is I guess the ultimate goal for any artist, right? I mean, um, I think every artist also would like to have their work seen in places like LA, New York, Paris, London. I really just want to have that opportunity to give it its 
much of a platform as possible to really uh, share it with people. I mean, there are a lot of things, um, such as my show with false abstraction. I think it's something that is uh, very applicable and never really been done before, especially within a you know, medium with any type of wood carving, let alone with woodography. So, something that you know, I'd like to have it in as many art publications as possible. Uh, I'd love to have it in some, something like Juxtapose magazine. You know, things along those lines where you're getting people who are looking for new and dynamic artwork and you know, people really appreciate it and just share it with as many people as possible. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Huh? No problem. I hope to see more of your work in the future. Yeah, I'm planning on stopping anytime soon. So, uh, yeah. uh, you can find my work online at either my website, ekwoodography.com. Uh, you can also find me on Facebook at Ziggy Sawdust Art. You can also find me on Twitter at Ziggy Sawdust Art. So, it's a way to find me and it's a way to see my work. I will, uh, yeah. <laughs> as far as the desire to create, I, I just think it's something that's almost a name, a name part of people. I mean, everybody I feel has uh, creativity, and there's a you know, an art form that's just waiting for you know, people are just waiting to realize whether it's you know anything from carving, quilting, painting, drawing, music. I mean, there's so many forms of expression out there. And I feel a lot of people just haven't found their form of expression to really express the creativity that they have within themselves.